Please note these are a form of social commentary and not in any way meant to put down the ideas and ideals of any political or gender identity. You are all fair game in the eyes of the wicked and we see you. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh shit, I'm One that might be. This is not a new world. It is simply an extension of what began in old world. It has patterned itself after every dictator who has ever planted a written imprint of food on the face of this earth since the beginning of time. Fuck, suck, and eat butt. Alrighty, and we are both up. And where's my children? There they are. Alright, how's it going, my beautiful little kids? Alright, so today we have an actual special guest for once. How's it going, Skinny Pete? It is going, man. It is going. It I am, uh, I, I'm enjoying the, uh, the 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 topics that the book uh, that you're going to present here in a second uh, brought up. So I'm excited. I'm excited about this. Uh, did you get a Did you get a chance to uh, you know get a little bit of the book? Uh, today we're, we're we're discussing prequel. Um, I discussed this this morning just to give everyone a little forewarning that uh, yeah, you might have to put thinking caps on. Most people will watch the reruns, of course, but um, all right. So yeah, to start off, uh, let me see. I know I took out some bullet points here, uh, and yes, I go with the golden mic because I'm Rush Limbaugh is a fucking asshole, and so I figure I, I'll steal his thing, and, and so. I'm going with the golden mic now. It's kind of bougie, you know what I mean? I wish I had a golden mic. Yeah, it's bougie, but it's like a, it's like a good bougie. I don't know how to explain it. Uh, I listen to anyone that has a golden mic, you know? <laughs> it makes the words just come up <laughs> more collegial or regal. <laughs> it's flow on, flow on you. All right, so... Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I threw out some uh, some bullet points, and, and one of the first things I, I I noticed from the book that that instantly popped out. Uh, but before I get that, what I want to do is uh, I, I like the um, I like the uh, listing or the the summary that we get from the Amazon uh, the Amazon uh, list whenever you're about to order the book. It gives you that little summary. And I, I actually really enjoyed it because it, it pretty much gets the book down to the T. Do you mind if I read that? Go for it. All right. So inspired by your research for the hit podcast Ultra, Rachel Maddow charts the rise of a wild American strain of authoritarianism that has been alive and on the far right edge of our political st- spectrum for the better part of a century. Before and after... Our troops had begun fighting abroad in World War II. A clandestine network flooded with the country with flooded the country with disinformation, aimed at sapping the set, uh, strength of United States war efforts, and persuading Americans that our natural alliance was with the Axis and not against it. It was a sophisticated and shockingly well-rounded campaign and well-funded campaign to undermine democratic institutions, promote anti-Semitism, and destroy citizens' confidence in their elected leaders with the ultimate goal of overthrowing the U.S. government and installing authoritarian rule. That's just paragraph one. And I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't sum the book better. Uh, it, it's really what got me into the book and, and really why I couldn't put it down. 
I, I couldn't agree more. And you know, one of the craziest things about all of this is that you never hear about this, right? I go to school and they teach us that uh, the US was staunchly against the, the, the Nazis and we went to war, we fought them, we beat them and that was the end. But uh, this book kind of really opens your eyes to the political situation in the 1940s leading up to World War II. And it, you know, one of the things that really shocked me was how many prominent Americans were pro-Nazi. That that was definitely on my list too. The the amount of prominence that was involved in in the uh, uh, sympathizers was uh, incredible. I, I don't. I've even heard of Philip Johnson. You know, like I, I even thought Philip Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 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 architect. Now I think. Nazi sympathizer, Nazi sympathizer, Nazi sympathizer, and the creator of the gray shirts. Like he, he is now have a he has a totally different identity now to me. And uh, I think that uh, that was something she nailed on the head, and uh, you just nailed on the head there was the amount of prominent figures. I mean, we all expect a senator or a governor or uh, you know an H O R. Uh, not necessarily the the fucking uh, uh, white collar lifestyle, so to speak. Right, lifestyle. right. And uh, the the book kind of talks a little bit about uh, Henry Ford, right? Which right. I, I feel like we all know that this guy is a huge dick one, right? He's credited for inventing the forty hour week, which yeah. Like if 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 you did that, you kind of suck as a person, right? <laughs> yeah, you're already on the wrong side of uh, history. Right, but, sure. but he apparently took this like book that was completely <laughs> about how Jews plan to dominate the world. Right. And, and he would uh, he he had bought a newspaper, right? And he would reprint a lot of the bullshit that was that was put on this book on his newspaper and state it as as factual. And um, basically redistributing propaganda as as factual. Yes. And, uh, and whenever you bought a, a Ford uh, back then, it was like a Ford Model T. I think it was the first model. Right. Get one of his uh, anti-Semitic pamphlets uh, to, to go along with that. Like for free. <laughs> it's in the glove compartment. <laughs> it's already there for you. Yeah, the guy was a total dick, right? And and uh, one of the crazy things about um, the book also was that it, it talks about how Hitler really admired Henry Ford. And, uh, you know, thinking back to the 1940s and how influential Henry Ford was in those days, you got to wonder, like, how many people really bought into this shit? Yeah. And it's just crazy. But I guess the, the point that Rachel is trying to make, and I don't know how you feel about this, mm -hmm. but... She, we've been through this before, right? We saw yeah. uh, uh, fascism uh, try to rise up before, and we beat it then. And so the idea is that there are lessons to be learned from that that we can apply to today. And I think uh, there was an interview that Rachel Maddow did about the book, and someone asked her about the lessons learned, and she she basically said, "If there's no silver bullet, it's a it's a whole." It's a, it's an effort from from politicians, from journalists, uh, from private sector, uh, from the creative types, from everyone from the bottom up. You know, has to be uh, together in in fighting this. And I think that was her her takeaway. Um, but and, but I don't yeah, I I would definitely agree with that because um, she really does give you a, a great illustration on the dominoes that are in place, and it seems. But it also seems like we go through this every hundred years, you know, um, from Revolutionary War to the eighteen hundreds, where we go to this uh, the Civil War, then we have you know, after that we have the slave trade of uh, eighteen ninety. After that, we had, uh, you know, when the slave trade was was finally brought in and, and, and you know, banned, uh, countries like Brazil started force breeding uh, slaves in order to keep the remaining slaves because the rules stated you could not buy anymore. So they didn't say you couldn't make anymore. And that brought out the story of uh, guys like, like Pata Seca, 
who uh, apparently had over a thousand kids and uh, actually managed to raise a lot of them. They ended up being kind of prominent figures in black history. And a lot of them were directly related to Potaseka. But we will never... I, I've, I have 50 movies about Batman, and I don't have one about Potaseka. So right. it's really funny how they, they, they don't want us to know uh, simple things like, you know, uh, the Romans... Uh, realizing that if all the slaves were to wear red uniforms, they would realize how many there are, and then they would uprise. And that was the whole reason why they didn't want to dress up their slaves anymore. They're like, no, 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 no just dress them up normal. That, and so every hundred fucking years we have to do this. <laughs> why, why do you think that is? Do you think it's like built into human nature to that's what scares me it's it's like how many how many times can we learn the same lesson and then you know the next generation goes on and says well we'll do it we'll do it a little bit better we'll do a little bit better i mean (laughs) and then it turns into woodstock 69 to woodstock 99 (laughs) uh i I always like bringing that up just because people think that uh, woodstock 99 was like the epitome of all evil and uh, they don't realize that actually the 69 Woodstock also needed uh, military assistance to bring food, water. It was completely unprepared, a lot like the, the, the fire festival. Uh, <laughs> a lot of the same shit happened back then. Um, so uh, when you were talking about uh, when you were talking about prominent figures, now you know we had discussed this before we had done this how we didn't want anything scripted. So you had mentioned prominent figures, and I had actually written a note on there that some I actually kind of just wrote out this little series about how, especially in the first chapter, they, they divulge into uh, George Sylvester Virick. And uh, when they talk about his exploits, uh, his interviews... Uh, he would he would fake he would fake interest or at least get them to fame fake interest by telling them he was a poet, not a fucking journalist, but he was just another goddamn journalist. Uh, okay, Robert, this is the uh, guy that James. infiltrated the Nazis, right? Um, this was the guy that just uh, he was in the very first chapter, and he 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 was the he was the one he he had gotten the interview guys like uh, from Nikolai Tesla to hitler himself and he actually considered hitler to be one of the most uh dangerous figures he actually he actually quoted uh that the most interesting figure was hitler simply because he is literally a time bomb and then you had other people that said actually he wasn't that remarkable at all and some people believed he was a simpleton. Have you ever actually heard his voice? <laughs> I have not. There, there's only one or two recordings of it. Uh, there's a he had a dinner with some uh, so for somebody's birthday. It was like some some regal figure, and uh, he had his his living room recorded. And they were supposed to destroy these tapes. They never did. So you can actually hear it online. His actual actual voice. And I was hoping like hell he would sound like Michael Jackson. Like that was like my all time hope. And nope, nope, he was more like a Barry White. And I was like, no, 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 damn it. Uh, no wonder he was commanding. And so, yeah, uh, another thing that really interests me about George Sylvester Virk was um, his, his uh, I mean, of course, he's a German propagandist, but, um, you know, the fact that he got to meet people like Tesla and uh Mussolini he met Freud and Sigmund Freud actually managed to give him a quick like instant psychoanalysis because he told him you know this will take a couple years but I can tell you right off the bat you got daddy issues (laughs) and and the guy was because he said something like along the lines where you know I wonder what my needs are or something like that and right away, he just says, well, that would take a couple of years. I can just tell you that you, you seriously have some father issues. You're clearly going to stronger, more prominent men looking for a father. And it's just amazing how fucking brilliant that guy was. I, that was one of the most 
the best reads I had on the bus. I couldn't believe that. It, it always comes back to the daddy issues. <laughs> doesn't matter doesn't matter where you come from or who you are. I seriously think that for uh, uh, Hitler was no different. I don't think Hitler was any different. I think he had daddy issues. So, so let me let me ask you a question about this because uh, I, I'm I'm trying to wrap my head around you know th this this word fascism. Like, what what exactly does that mean? Well. To to me, or or do you mean like the, the definition of itself? Yeah, like I mean, we can look up the definition online, whatever. Right, of course, you can always just Google it. I feel I feel like it's it's synonymous with like authoritarianism and, and yeah. For me, fa yeah, fa uh, I guess like yeah. Off the top of my head, I would say uh, fascism to me is is a a one idealistic um, conformity where the con the conformity to that I idealism becomes full on identity and you now will die for that identity uh, that seems to be like the, what fascism is and and generally speaking it's it, that identity is nationalistic right like we are yeah and it's always a national pride it's always a, or a religious pride and, and and then you have uh, that's how you end up with with so many different ideocracies. Uh, I, I thought that the, some of the interesting shit about guys like like Huey Long was he 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 almost started he almost came out as like a socialist. You know when we read about him in the book, um, th that was another thing about Rachel Maddow. It doesn't seem like she's pulling any punches, but she's also not stabbing any. Did you notice that that she's not punching anybody down? She's, she's right. not punching right. downward in this book at all. No, not at all. And, and I think she's very careful not to compare today's uh, brand of fascism. To Absolutely. Fascism. It's completely different, right? She's not saying that that today's fascist. And I'm just going to go ahead and say, you know, uh, th there are parts of the far right in the Republican Party that are very fascist. Um, she's not saying that they're not. She's not saying that at all. She's just simply pointing out the fact that you know this this problem of fascism is not new. New, no, not, not at all. And you know it's hard for us, uh, relatively younger folks that are living through this right now, to see this and think, "Oh my goodness, what's going on in the world?" When in fact, I think w what she's trying to say is we've been through this before, and perhaps we can get through it again, right? Right. right. And, yeah, it, it's. Uh, I, I have to, so I haven't read the whole book, right? I've just read this book. Right. So I've seen, I've seen the interviews uh, that uh, Rachel Maddow did on the book. She did a book tour and talked about it. Um, but I, I really am interested in reading it. I'm probably going to go buy it after this. And this is not an ad for the book. For yeah, that, you know what? That's that's why when I when I first mentioned it, I'm like, I don't want to sound like a shill. I'm not trying to sell. I don't work for Rachel Maddow. I don't work for MSNBC. In my opinion, MSNBC is hardly better than Fox News. They're <laughs> just on the opposite side of the coin. I would agree with that. In the end, they're. I mean, look at what they did to uh, uh, Mehdi Hassan. I think he's probably one of the most low, pathetic things I've ever seen to fire a guy because he's the only one that talks about Palestinian innocence. Wait, 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 wait. hold on, hold on. Mehdi Hassan? Yeah, uh, he's a MSNBC coordinator or a correspondent, and uh, he had his own show, and he was definitely the one you, you were going to get the most viral shit from like all the shit he was doing was getting all these like viral hits rather than Lawrence O'Donnell or even Rachel Maddow herself and and that was another thing was uh, trying to explain to people I don't personally care too much for Rachel Maddow she can sometimes come off a little one-sided and maybe a little glib at times but in this case, it's it's purely historical and it's purely analytical. But with guys like Mehdi Hassan, I thought it was just low. So, wait, what happened? This guy got canceled for... Yeah, he, he didn't lose his job, but he basically lost his job. I mean, you took away his show. That He's now going to be a part of some bullshit six-person team, you know? Like, 
you went to see his show because you went to see him. You wanted to see him tell a congressman to go fuck himself, whether he is a Democrat or a fucking Republican. And um, just like how they got rid of Chank Uger, uh, they're, they're doing it to him, uh, except for the fact that when they did it to Chank, he turned around and made a fucking corporation and created TYT, which is the only place I get my news anymore. Um, I, I cannot trust MSNBC. I cannot trust Fox. I, I will never bother with Fox News because they admit to themselves that they're entertainment. So, you know, you know what I like to do sometimes, just as an exercise <clears throat> of like practicing open mind, I like to read the same news story covered by MSNBC and Fox. And then Fox, yeah. Yeah, and then, I'll even throw Newsmax in there and do that. Yeah. You'll see it's the same story, but it's being told completely different. And you have to figure the truth is somewhere in the middle there. And, and, yeah, the, the, the minutia, it's there. Fucking assholes, man. <laughs> and, and um, you know, I, it, it really it, it makes me miss the days where we had people like Jon Stewart to just jump in and uh, go on. I mean, the guy cost, I mean, Tucker Carlson will never like Jon Stewart. Jon Stewart went on CN, uh, CNN, went on Crossfire, and fucking murdered Tucker Carlson right there and said, you know, you know the, one of the best jokes was, you know, are you guys really comparing The Daily Show to your show? The, the, the show that leads into ours is puppets making crank phone calls. <laughs> and uh, he goes, Jesus Christ, man, we're in trouble here, guys. And, and we need you to stop hurting America. How old are you? And Tucker says, you know, 35. He goes, and you wear a bow tie. And <laughs> just the crowd goes nuts. The cameraman can't stop. You can't even hold the camera anymore. And it was the death of hardball. That uh, crossfire. That show died that day. And so I think some I can I honestly do I will say this. I think that John's being a little selfish. He knows that he can make so much more change, but uh, uh, it's like he's afraid of taking that step. I think that he doesn't get enough credit for really, you know, starting this line of news that is mixed with comedy because yeah. I mean, the show wasn't like serious news in the beginning it was just kind of like oh this is just a comedy show yeah. what snl had been doing you know with their, with with the their weekend story. update right. right but but he took it to another level because he started providing actual meaningful insight and i remember watching his show and thinking to myself holy shit this guy is smarter than the actual news anchors you know Fox. yeah right right and I think it turned a lot of people to to those uh, to those outlets to you know Comedy Central to get their news as opposed to like a more traditional uh, news news uh, outlet. Yeah, and and uh, uh, Rachel Maddow, I think she made the biggest deal on her show when Stewart left. When Stewart had his final show, it, she was in tears on her show. I actually watched it that night. And I couldn't believe how, how sad she was. And she had even said without him, she wouldn't have a job. Um, she wouldn't have gotten into it. And it, it literally inspired not only a whole generation of actors, uh, like not only did it enhance Stephen Colbert, you know, guys, you know, all the writers, you know, Steve Carell, uh, fucking, uh, you can name 50 different people um you know a lot like snl they all got famous but nobody filled his shoes nobody ever did nobody ever could and i think it's just you know now that he got fired from apple when he had already said you think i give a fuck about apple fuck apple <laughs> like on his own show who the fuck watches apple anyway like I don't exactly it's never it, been like you gotta watch it die <laughs> <laughs> with the Apple subscription, you have to watch fucking Moon Landers or so. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know any shows with other than <laughs> yeah, the John Stewart one. I think uh, Megan Kelly's got one now. Which one's Ted Lasso in? Ted Lasso was a good show. 
Oh yeah, I it thought that was on. See, I thought that was on Netflix. I, I didn't even know that. I think mean, that might be Apple. Maybe, no, hold on, let's, let's do a little real. <laughs> what the hell is on Apple? Because uh, yeah, I like how John Oliver said, you know, or you could watch Apple, where TV goes to die. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah, uh, the fact that you know, uh, you had uh, uh, John Stewart just you know, just smashing Apple the whole time he was even working for them, uh, it, you know, because somebody tried to call him out on that and they said, uh, something along the lines like, Well, you work for Apple, and he goes, Who the fuck says I work for Apple? I work for me, I get paid by Apple, <laughs> I get aired by Apple. Right. But I get paid through the advertisements, you know, like he did it real, real honest. And it's also why I used to love, uh, I, I really loved his, love his honesty. And, uh, oh, here, here's one that I wanted to ask you. Uh, when we were talking about, uh, when we're talking about these, you know, these, these polarizing figures, uh, are, you're aware, I'm sure that, it seems like every uh, common belief, whether it's Christianity, uh, leftism, or rightism, you know, all that shit, um, the common belief of proving the deterioration of a culture always comes down to the acceptance towards alternative lifestyles. Would you say that that's accurate? Uh, for instance, they always say you know society is at its worst and, and i've heard this by so many generations society is always at its worst and that's when you get androgyny and homosexuality and all the things i don't want to tell my wife that i'm kind of into so you so 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 you're asking if if all of these uh uh ideologies they they measure the decline of society by how like how open how ex how accepted yeah how accepted alternative lifestyles become i th i think that's pretty accurate it, you i always hear this and i've i've heard this from you know christians back in the 50s and i've heard this from from christians back in the 30s on different tapes and different documentaries that are always done by you know reverend phil that's selling them out of his fucking humvee um my point is that, that this fucking douche these douchebags they are always blaming the acceptance not homosexuality in itself that the deviant uh lifestyles but the acceptance of it is proof that a a society is in decline Right in in their eyes. In the right in the eyes of the church, or in the eyes of whatever. I guess my question, like I would answer your question with a question, which is a terrible way, but a uh, terrible answer. But, but um, is there any group or ideology that uh, sort of extols, uh, you know, alternative uh, open mindedness and alternative lifestyles? Like, is there is there a group? Well, um, ancient Greece. Ancient Greece didn't have any um, anti-LGBTQ rules or uh, uh, transphobias. Um, ancient Greece uh, looked past that. Um, yeah, but they also had slaves. So okay, but um, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean that's terrible. But that was normal back then. That was a societal norm. So, so you're saying that that. Well, I would I would argue that America is sort of the closest we've ever come to a group of like a, like a that's, I mean group that says hey you know we promote alternative you know whatever <laughs> I mean it's sort of written into our constitution right freedom of right but uh, 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 but if we talk like like pre pre World War One in Germany um, there was a all gay lesbian and uh, intergender uh, league. Uh, when Hitler got, you know, when Hitler started jumping in on their territory, they had to all go in hiding. They didn't want to be listed with the pink triangle and all that. But um, they they were starting to have rallies uh, 
I believe it was in the very early 30s, like 31, maybe, uh, before Hitler had gotten out of Berlin, before Hitler was even out of jail. Uh, I think there was a period of time where, where uh, well, I know there was a period of time where they, where they had alliances, big signs, big fucking movements, and they, they were ready to get their rights. And it seemed like Germany itself was ready and then again this fucking um Id- idealistic group basically destroyed that so I-, I do understand what you mean when you said that there is no group that accepts that anyway except for uh modern america but i, I mean, to say that it's-, it's always there it's just like nobody takes notice of it unless they want to mention societal decline. And right. then they'll take notice that there are androgynous people. But it's like, dude, there's always been androgynous people. Right. And uh, uh, no, go yeah. ahead. Well, I, I was just going to I was just going to say, like, the, the, the closest we've ever come is really uh, America. But, you know, the, by definition, when a group comes together, Right. What what brings that group together is some sort of set set of beliefs or uh, some sort of shared ideas or values. Right. So right. Naturally, some sort of similar was, understanding. Yeah. Well, naturally, when so, someone goes outside of those those values or ideas, then that is, in the group's view, the beginning of the decline of the group. <laughs> so. Um, I guess it's a little philosophical in, in a way. No, yeah, you're right. It, it becomes more, yeah, it becomes a fringe when it really wasn't a fringe. It's just a lesser populated uh, set of, yeah, a set of agreed idealisms. Uh, and, and, like, imagine, imagine a world where uh, all of the marginalized groups of today are no longer marginalized and there's some sort of true like uh uh you know uh hegemony of of all groups and i mean there's still going to be groups that rise up that are marginalized right i mean that that, it, right. that's like built into or is it i don't know i don't know i mean, I mean in, in a way isn't it yeah in a way it's it's defiance and like like people power so yeah no I, i'd agree with that like uh i don't know guys that like to wear two left shoes you know would just start a fucking group and be like hey fuck you we like two left shoes yeah, <laughs> yeah. you've been wearing then- a left and a right <laughs> shoe centuries now but we've always been here with two left, the two left shoe group of people. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I just went through my list of like ridiculous Monty Python jokes. I thought of the men with the silly walks. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, okay. There's the bureau of the men with the silly walks. <laughs> so yeah, I just I, I've noticed that within so many of these. Uh, uh, I've, I've been watching a lot of documentaries, and of course, I don't know. I've always considered myself like an unofficial anthropologist. I, I love watching people; they they just amaze me. Uh, spe- especially uh, an, an ability to to just freeze, the ability to look at objective reality and say no. Uh, cognitive dissonance. That to me, that's probably one of the most fascinating things. Because you know, debate, uh, emotion, and debate don't do not go together. So it's weird for me to understand how other people rationalize, or actually lack thereof rationale. Well, if you like people watching, <laughs> may I recommend Disney World? <laughs> as long as you don't recommend Chat Roulette, because they, you know what, they don't like me at all. Uh, I got yelled at by like four different penises. Like, <laughs> there's there's never people on there. It's just penises after penis. You know, it's like wow, that's a lot. But even the penises don't like me. You know, the pee hole opens up. Fuck you out, <laughs> and I gotta move on. You know, <laughs> and then I have to call him a dick. 
I'm trying to see if I wrote anything else for, uh, further than that. Um, you mentioned this one already. I was going to mention the comparisons and realities of our world today and then using late 30s, uh, prohibition, pro-Black Tuesday uh, scenarios. And the characters are almost like interchangeable uh, when you want to like put the mirror on for today or, or do the reflection of today. You could literally just put different names in there and they'll fit right in. And it's funny how many times the word insurrection comes up and how literally this has been a problem before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, the last thing I was talking about was the the last thing. I, yeah, last thing I had was was the Huey Long situation and Hitler seeming to be that polarizing figure where he changed, you know, Chancellor to Führer. You know, Chancellor wasn't good enough for him, but so he wanted Führer all of a sudden. Um, and you had so many people that that found him to be prophetic and and commanding and de, you know demanding of attention and then other people thought he was actually pretty empty-minded and a bad actor and <laughs> not not a good uh not 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 my kind of guy you know then that much to say <laughs> you know apparently like he only like he only spoke in like really quiet rooms like he, he like barely ever spoke even though he had a, a a good voice you know like he had a he had a radio station kind of voice i would say similar to mine <laughs> well shit. i hope that's the only similarity well yeah that will, me too <laughs> well I, I have brown hair i don't know if that counts but i am in no way a fritz well, I can't wait to fucking they start making robots and we can vote on the the best robot for president. Because <laughs> if, if if we're not there already, <laughs> what do you think Biden's a robot? No, but I'm pretty goddamn sure DeSantis is. I mean, mm. that guy scares the living shit out of me. I don't He's know. Robotic. There, there's just some about his smile that that just screams to me, you know, that kid that used to torture roadkill, like <laughs> that's who he looks like to me. Like, really? Uh, just yeah. Did you like? Did you watch? Uh, if you watch, not the last debate where it went completely off the rails, but if you watch the debate, the debate before that, and whenever they talk about, or no, no, no it was the Gavin Newsom DeSantis debate. Did you watch that? I did not, but I heard about it. And I heard that Newsom was so much taller and better looking than DeSantis. He, you can tell that A, that Gavin Newsom, I mean, he called it, a, uh, DeSantis called it a shadow campaign. And even if it is, who cares? He just mopped the floor with you. But what cracked me up the most was you have no reason to be there. He's, he's not taking your job. You have nothing to do here. And he's literally egging you on. So you took debate. You literally went on the debate and took debate. Like, it's fucking hilarious. He, he took debate in both, in two different ways. And so that's all it was. It was literally just an ass whooping. And uh, Hannity has such a man crush on Gavin Newsom that uh it was awesome because gavin newsom just kind of mentions his tie and again i, I i've been st i study people i just i love to study their reactions um just the way they react to, to little things like ted bundy used to lick his lips whenever he think of a memory every single time he would lick his lips and uh desantis i notice he licks his lips every time he's nervous and when he doesn't want to talk so uh, he, he literally just points and says, oh, Sean, I really like that tie, buddy. And the giggle, I swear to God, sounded like that of a, you know, 18-year-old uh, you know, Japanese girl in a cartoon. Like, it was <laughs> like pearl clutching and everything. Like, oh, this little thing. And, and all he said was, I like that time, man. Oh, you, this this old thing. Yeah, Hannity's fucking stupid. 
<laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of uh, of Hannity. I, I just feel like he's a fear monger, and, and he likes to, uh, you know, kind of prey on people's fears and convince them that things are going to shit when they're not really. I, I think that's. But isn't that everybody's job? Like uh, anybody yeah. in, in in Fox and 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 all yeah. right. That's, the, the news has become like another form of entertainment, I, I, I feel. Yeah. Like even politics, it, you know, you mentioned the debate. I feel like debates are kind of like entertainment. They're kind of like watching reality TV, you know? Yeah, it's a big it's commercial. It's, it's a huge yeah. commercial. And, uh, uh, you know, like what, like we know, we know our vote doesn't count. We know there's a fucking electoral college that you're never going to get rid of. It's the one the biggest remnant of slavery and you're never going to get rid of it. You know, this, this keeps your fucking guys in line. The electoral so, college. Yeah. I, and when you have three fourths majority of the vote, our vote does not count. Our vote is a cute suggestion that goes into a fucking suggestion box, but the three fourths majority rule will always stand. And they didn't even use that shit as harsh until uh the black vote came in once the uh amendment came in the fucking electoral college got fucking even more powerful well i i don't know about uh the electoral college i, I will say that you know if you get rid of the electoral college and it just becomes uh, a general of uh, like popularity contest whoever wins california and new york are going to win every race so it becomes the united states of california and new york basically so I, I think that the, the idea of an electoral college is smart. I do think that maybe gerrymandering and the, all I was going to say, how is it not gerrymandering the vote and controlling the vote? Absolutely. I mean, you're literally taking away people's voice. I mean, we don't get to elect uh, the electoral college. Fuck the electoral college. <laughs> so I'm like, we don't we don't even get a say in, in who gets in there like uh like these judges that get to be judges for life why why i i don't want i don't want a 99 year old judge that can't read anymore or, uh, or the no term limits on these these old ass senators that get in there and they just uh, rachel feinstein who fucking literally waited to the moment she died yeah. That took up uh, what did it take up? Ten judge judgments. It took up ten judges judges that, that could have gotten a job, and then we got we got a military controlled by a fucking guy that has never been in the fucking military. Uh, what the fuck? And he got Matt Gates running around. I love that the professional douche got him. Uh, gave Matt Gates an award. And then said, uh, thank you for all your contributions to Venmo and getting underage girls to have sex with you. And he took the fucking award. <laughs> and they fucking grabbed him and threw him off the stage. Uh, shout out to Professional Douche. Uh, I know you watch once in a while, so love you, man. You're awesome. Love so, you. <laughs> you got to make friends with all the fucking YouTubers. Man. It's, 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 a, it's a fun world. One day we'll get to that level where we're like, <laughs> on politicians. Yeah, no shit, dude. I mean, that's that's the honestly, that's like the the only true so fucking social media. I mean, everything else is bots. Everything else is uh, one guy with seven different profiles at least. Um, I I really get scared when people tell me about it as if like it's a, a accomplishment. You know, uh, I don't know if you have, you know, I doubt you've ever heard this. You have a life. Um, but I, I hear losers all the time. Like, oh, man, I got like seven Facebooks. Why? Why? I hate the one that I have. And I just use it to post this fucking shit <laughs> that you're watching. What, what do they do with their seven Facebooks? Just talk to different girls on them? Um, they use them to trap. They use them to troll. And they use them to find out what other people think about. Um, they set up entire uh, scenarios where jobs like full time jobs, full fucking time jobs, and uh, that's what they do. I, I don't know how they manage to do this at their jobs, but they do. I had a girl. Uh, I had a shadow at, at Pace, and I ended up 
getting up and leaving. I got fired because I started doing another job. That's how bored I got. So uh, I was supposed to shadow this girl. She was this young black girl who just like, like she knew her job and she did not want to teach it to me. And so she would just stay there on live stream. Like, and this is when my daughter was only like, she's 12 now. So this is the only when she was about three. And so she would be on a live stream and literally these fuckers just stare at each other. So imagine me just staring at you while you're at work. And then when you feel like it, you talk to me. And then I'll be laying there eating chips and shit. That that was what she did. So I, I straight up just got up, went over to the guys and started uh, learning how the tickets work and learning how the gas cards work and literally helping them fix shit. So I, I'm not a guy that can sit for eight hours a day and do nothing. I, like If I work, I need to work. Yeah. I, I don't I get that, man. It's fucking. I, I'll never understand the the seven Facebook people. That just sounds shady. It, it's also a shit ton of stress. I mean, can you imagine? All you know, not, not only caring what people think about you, but but people you will never meet in your life. You all know? the all the notifications. Yeah, shit. I, I the notifications I get. Like literally, I just you go to clear all and they go away. It's amazing. It's a great little button. And, <laughs> but these fuckers, like, it's all dopamine. That's a, the the thing that people fear to accept the most is that it's all dopamine. It literally is. Every time you look at that little number, every time that little ding happens, you get that little hit of dopamine that says, "I want another one." I want another one. And it just it's just chasing a dragon. That's all it is. And you'll never catch that dragon. <laughs> you are you are a ton of help right now. You're a fucking huge help right now. <laughs> <laughs> you talkative bastard. <laughs> well, I, I'm just man. I I've been feeling some type of way lately just because of everything that's going on in the world and you know, um, tying it back to the book, just, I, I'm really just hoping that better days uh, are in front of us for everyone. And I don't know what that looks like, what, what that looks like or what that means, but, um, fuck, man. There is a, there is a, uh, there I'm is really almost a feeling of hopelessness. Batman movie. Can we get another Batman movie? <laughs> <laughs> Like, the last one with Robert Patrick was really good. I was like, or whatever that guy's name, was. Robert Patrick. Wait a minute, that was T one thousand. Never mind. Um, I, I, I didn't watch the Patterson that. kid. Oh, yeah. you didn't watch it? It was no, good. It was good. No. That was actually worth watching. Check that out. It's on. It's on. It's on HBO Max. I think it's actually really good. I just, uh, but I can't see him as anything other than a vampire. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Well, luckily they 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 keep the fucking thing on them. Uh, it's just it's a good story because it's a young Batman. Um, he's obviously been on the job for only about a year, um, but I, I really like the relationship of him and Alfred. Um, he doesn't do much of a great Bruce Wayne. It's really more of a great Batman. Um, and it, it all just is Batman coming to terms with uh, being not only the dark night, but the very bright light that is the heart of Gotham. And so it was a way of him not only embracing the shadow, but finally accepting the light. And so uh, I, I thought it was an interesting take. A very pointless... <laughs> um, extra scene there's a very pointless extra fucking scene that didn't need to be in there we don't need another goddamn joker the last thing we need is another fucking joker i can't take any more jokers we can do we can do one more joker give it one more <laughs> oh come on 
on. I mean, look at the last one. They didn't even want to call him Joker. Remember uh, the Jared Leto Joker? Th that No, I, I refuse to accept that one. That one never happened. No, I was thinking about the, the one that was on the TV show Gotham. They couldn't even call him Joker. That That's how bad it was. Like, they didn't want to piss people off and something about the copyright. I think some, but you think that if you have the right to Batman, you have the right to Joker. I mean, isn't that all Bob Kane? So, I don't know. Um, Earlier you mentioned, you know, they, they don't teach us the history of, you know, what we're talking about with Rachel Maddow's book. Right. They don't teach us real history. Instead, they want to put out 10 Batman movies. And yeah, right. I wonder, like, that's not like some government conspiracy or, or the media trying to do it wrong. I think that is a reflection of us as a people. We don't give a shit about, you know, the the important stuff because it's boring. Like, no one wants to talk about fucking fascism. I'd rather watch Batman pound. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, like, or duke it out with the Joker, and then sure, but sure, but you you can always always use uh, the uh, you know use whatever topic you want to teach as a backdrop. I mean, there, I mean, I'd love to see Batman in World War II. That would be pretty fucking awesome, actually. Uh, teach me all about fucking you know the fucking. 1939 to 1945 Batman. Oh, you just gave me so many ideas. Batman. There you go. Throw Batman in everything. Batman in the Revolutionary War across in the Delaware. <laughs> just Batman, shoving George Batman. Washington in the water. <laughs> Batman fights Henry Ford. You know I mean? just, you're not that. gonna build any. You're not gonna build any tires for tanks now, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, U.S. Steel was the one behind the uh, the, the tracks to Auschwitz. You know, uh, that, that that was all U.S. Steel. Um, the Dupont family, the Rockefeller, uh, the Ford family, the Bush family, and you know, they're, they're they're all fucking not. They're all from Nazi money. They're all of them. And and then you got the royal family. Their name is not Windsor. It, their, their name is not Windsor. It's a fucking German name. And uh, like that's why... What's that? What's the name? Like Hans or some shit? Uh, you're gonna, you'd have to look it up. Uh, I don't know it off the top of my head. I knew it at a time. If you asked me like a year ago, I'd know it. Um, but their name is not Windsor, just like Trump isn't Trump. You know, his real name is Drumpf. D-R-U-M-P-F. <clears throat> Drumpf. And so, uh, yeah, you got fucking, um, oh, shit. I totally lost my train of thought. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they're all fucking liars, man. They're really goddamn liars. But, the, but uh, yeah, the DuPont family, uh, U.S. Steel, uh, Henry Ford, uh, the Bush family that had money in the Standard Oil business, E.H. Uh, e. Harriman, um, God, I, I, I can go on and on and on. Um, there's a really great about a four to six hour documentary uh, that's called Everything is a Rich Man's Trick. And it is probably one of the best chronological uh, documentaries when it talks about the education that we don't get in school. And they even say, this will be a history lesson unlike anything you've had in school. But feel free to look any of this up. And so, you know, I, I kept trying to fact check. I, I don't want to be right sometimes. That's what these people don't understand when I do these 9-11 videos and I do these, these Columbine videos. I don't want to be right at all. I am hoping to God, if there was one, that I am wrong and that there's sunshine and rainbows on the other fucking side, and that I'm just a cynic. But, you know, there's only <laughs> there's only so many fucking times you can read that ink, and you just, your heart just dies. And you're like, no, they're, rainbows are just fucking moisture and light. I'm not, uh, I'm not tracking on, on any of that, the, the call <laughs> that you're mentioning, or 9-11, but, but, that that will have to be, I think, a topic for another show. Maybe we can uh, 
I, I just mean to say that that you know when it comes down to um, learning about what you don't want to learn about, um, the the point has nothing to do with nine uh, eleven or or Columbine. My, the point is the truth is always going to be terrifying. The truth is always going to be painful, and the truth is never going to be what you want. It's just not. We don't live in that world, unfortunately. Yeah, that's why we watch Batman movies. That's why we watch fucking Batman movies, exactly. Because when you find out that you know Hulk Hogan was really a dick, and you find out Vince McMahon was a rapist, and you find out that Macho Man was a wife beater, and you find Wait, out that Danny uh, fucking Elfman, <laughs> Danny fucking Elfman, a man yeah. that I thought was perfect in every goddamn way. <laughs> The man gave us that? the Simpsons, man. And and you get to read him and uh, uh, Bing Crosby and Dave, uh, Bill Cosby and and fuck, man. You're just like God. Is everybody Henry Kissinger? Is, is just everyone fucking pure evil? Mother Teresa, fucking the magnificent Moolah, Mae Young. I mean, shit. And then. You got assholes like George Santos. Everybody has a past. No, sick fucking people have sick fucking pasts. <laughs> and that's and that's all there is to it. Well Agreed? Yes, agreed. We can agree to that. I mean it's not it's not oh everyone has a past. No, sick fucking people have sick fucking pasts, you know, like uh it's one yeah, thing I mean, like, if you like, you know, that's did some shitty thing when you were like, yeah, like, I, I don't yeah. know, like, you like stole a pumpkin at, at a fucking neighbor's yard because you didn't have one for Halloween. It's not the same as joining Namble. I mean, yeah, fucking yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when you find out that your your friend is on the Nambla mailing list, you you, you unfriend that goddamn person. <laughs> It's just how it works. Oh, uh, so awesome, man. Well, this was awesome. Um, I always wrap it up around 58. So, uh, yeah, feel free to come by anytime. I love doing this. And this is the whole point of the actual original point of the show. So, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was it was fun to be here. I, I'm starting to learn that I really enjoy shooting the shit. We got to find yeah. more things to shoot the shit about. So, uh, right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, this was a good start. Um, yeah, maybe we can do two. Remember, we thought that that one was going to be, you know, full on enough. So, yeah, we, we should do two. We should have done um, um, Culture of Narcissism. Um, but yeah. I still got to look into that. Or we can do a little experiment and see if more people are attracted to us shooting the shit about Batman movies. Wait, dude, I, I'm all for it. I, I literally did one episode that I thought was going to go nowhere, and it was all Batman fan fiction films. So I picked like five of my favorites. <laughs> fucking thing was in double digits the whole fucking time. So it, you'd be surprised at what people fucking care about. <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming by, man. That was awesome. Uh, we'll try to do it again at least once a week. And then, uh, yeah, we'll pick out some different movies, pick out different shit to talk about. It's always easier. Sounds good, man. All right, brother. Really. Take it easy. Signing off. <laughs> Sorry, you said signing off? Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right, so that's, uh, that was Skinny Pete over there. And uh, thank you for joining us on Useless Agent. And, uh, yep, be yourselves. Uh, I should probably move that. <laughs> be yourselves. See you on the other side. Most of all, stay cheesy, my friends. In a world like this, always, always, always stay cheesy. Please note these are a form of social commentary and not in any way meant to put down the ideas and ideals of any political or gender identity. You are all fair game in the eyes of the wicked and we see you. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh shit, I'm Because it leads to the future, not a future that
world to be but one that might be. This is not a new world. It is simply an extension of what began in the old world. It has patterned itself after every dictator who has ever planted a written imprint of food on the face of this thing since the beginning of time. Fuck, suck, and eat butt. Welcome to the desert of the real. <laughs>